Let's talk about the biggest enemy of your success to breaking free from food addiction and emotional eating. And it's not the foods, it's not the people, it's not the food companies, it's not the taste of the food, it's your beliefs. It always comes back to what you believe. And that's what I want to talk about today. Before we get into how to change your beliefs, I want to talk about what they are and how we can define them, because that can also be a little bit tricky. If we're talking about different things, I'm not going to be able to help you. So first of all, a belief is just a thought that you have thought many, many times, You've thought it over and over again, until it becomes a belief. And you think that that is the truth. So the more times you think something, the more true it's going to feel to you. And here's where it gets a little bit sticky. We could ask ourselves, what makes something true? Is there like a truth out there that exists outside of us in terms of a reality that is true? Or like, how far do we want to take this? So we could probably get into a very philosophical debate about whether anything is true or not, but that isn't useful for what I am going to teach you today, so I'm going to keep it a little bit simpler than that today and just tell you how I'm going to define it. If we look at our world today, there are facts in the world that may or may not be true, okay? Bear with me. Today is a well-established truth that the earth is round, but before the ancient Greek era, it was a fact that the earth was flat. They can't both be true. And there are people in both times that don't believe in this truth, okay? But as a society, we decided that. Because this is what we as a collective society do. We agree on believing certain things. And it doesn't mean that it's true just because we have agreed on it. It just means that we have agreed that this is true. So when you speak to anyone, then that is the truth. And for most of us, it might not really matter whether it's true or not, if the earth is flat or not. It just helps us function in the world when we have the same definition. So it's important to know that there are many things that we have agreed on as being true that aren't necessarily true or that doesn't serve us. So there is no truth that exists in the world that is definitive. The world and our perspective in the world is always open to interpretation. So how you define the world is how you will experience the world. This is really important for you to know and understand, because if you believe that, you will automatically believe that you can also change any belief that you have to something that serves you better. It means that you can choose. So your interpretation is just of of what is going on in the world is what actually decides the truth. So if, if you know that and if you believe that, you can use that to your advantage. So many of those beliefs that we have, we never ever question them. We just accept them as truths because we don't even think about it a lot of time and questioning our own beliefs is a very uncomfortable process for three major reasons that I'm going to talk about today. The first reason is that beliefs are, they are hard to recognize and become aware of in the first place because We have thought them so many times that they just feel like they're true. It doesn't feel like there is an alternative. And the second reason, which I think a lot of you can (laughs) uh, relate to, is that beliefs that we share with other people in our tribe or environment, it creates a very isolating experience. And I know that so many of my carnival clients are struggling with this. And then the third reason is that when you question your beliefs, you have to be willing to have been wrong, which feels awful. We don't like being wrong. We like to be certain and we like to be right. We don't want to question ourselves. So when we question ourselves and determine that we were wrong, especially if we've been wrong for many years, it's very, very uncomfortable. And it makes us feel very unsure about things and insecure and doubtful. Let's have a look at these one at a time. It's hard to recognize those beliefs or belief systems that are shared with other people. If you're always around people who have the same view, when almost every single person you know or meet share the same beliefs, it's super hard to just recognize that it's just a belief. We don't recognize that these beliefs are optional. We think that this is the reality and that's it. There's nothing we can do about it. This is just the truth. 
we accept it. And I'm going to give you an example. <laughs> this is my, my pet hate. The saying like, once an addict, always an addict. And that you need to be abstinent for the rest of your life. If, or if you're not, you're going to have a relapse, as if that is a truth. Most people who work with any type of addicts or do any research or heard anything about it, they're going to agree that this is the truth. This is the reality, but it's not. It's just a belief system. Every single time I publicly say that this isn't true, someone will make a comment and tell me that this is their reality, to which I will say that it's because they believe it to be true. But if they instead started believing that they could change their response to the sugar or whatever food they are addicted to, they can. But since they don't yet believe it, they are not there yet. Because right now it feels really true because everyone says that it is. They expect it to be true. They're looking for confirmation that it is true. And so they experience it. The way out of this is to start looking for confirmation of the opposite, that it is not true. It's really important that you can recognize your beliefs that don't serve you so that you can start noticing evidence of the opposite and find people in the world that can show you that your belief isn't true. Find people who have done it. Find people who know how that works. And this is the opposite of what your brain usually wants to do. Your brain is always searching for confirmation. This is called confirmation bias. It always search for confirmation to prove that it's right. So logically, you do not want to believe that you will always have to be abstinent to have a chance of overcoming your food addiction. But your brain is constantly seeking proof of that to be true because you have thought it so often and your brain wants certainty. It feels a lot more comfortable, even if you don't like the result rationally. When I come along and I say that I have changed it, that plants a seed in your brain that maybe what you believe was wrong and maybe it's possible for you to do it as well. So it's important that you are willing to search for the opposite of what you believe and that you are willing to be wrong. Put yourself out there, open up for the possibility of being wrong. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. It's actually pretty good for you. Let's talk about this problem that a lot of people have, how, how it can feel really isolating to have a belief that is different than the society or the group that you are hanging out with. You have probably been taught many of these beliefs as if they were the truth and you've just accepted them. So when you want to believe something different, you are going to feel very isolated. It's much more comfortable when you share a belief with other people. That's why it's so important to find a community of other like-minded people, because this will, it will make the whole process of changing beliefs so much less painful, and it's going to be a lot quicker. It's just, you're going to be able to change your beliefs in a fraction of the time it would take you if you were alone, because then you have no proof, you have no reinforcement. Rationally, you know that you are not isolated, but this is a primal fear that all humans have. Some people are suffering more from it, but everyone has it. We don't want to be excluded from the group because there is protection in the group. If we get kicked out, we're up against defending our lives against that tiger all on our own. We don't have the group protection. It's very scary. So when you question a belief that is shared with your tribe, you're essentially opening yourself up to the possibility of being ridiculed and shamed and so on, all the thoughts that you have. But even if you don't speak it openly, you know it and it still makes you feel like an outsider, like you don't belong. And that goes against your DNA. It's not in your nature to do that. That's why it's so uncomfortable. So you can remind yourself that it's OK, that there are the people who believe the same thing as you or even better, find a different group of people to hang out with as well or instead who share the same beliefs as you. All of that is going to help you. And it's a really good start when you want to get into like immersing yourself in the environment of just being reinforced to actually continue growing. So let's move on to questioning your beliefs and how you are, need to be willing to be wrong. Let me ask you this. Have you ever heard someone say something and the first thought that you have is, what are you talking about? That's not true. <laughs> I've had that many times. A lot of the time you probably also feel really uncomfortable especially if they sound very certain about what they're talking about. 
because you feel like you're being confronted with this opposing view. And perhaps they even prove that it's true what they're saying, but you can't quite wrap your mind around it. So you're like, what the heck? This is really yucky. And this is exactly what happens when you are up against a belief that you think is a truth. They are trying to poke holes in that belief. And you're like, no, no, that's not going to work. This is the truth. I have talked to lots of people who are really, really proud that they have used the carnivore diet to overcome the carb addiction. And then they go on and they tell me that they need to be abstinent. And when I say that, or I suggest that it's possible to just retrain the brain to not have those cravings, and so that they, if they want to, they can just eat something with carbs in once in a while. I'm not talking about every day, once in a while. They get very defensive straight away. And they tell me that that doesn't work for me. Because they think that what's happened in the past is that I've eaten something. Then um, then I just go on, <laughs> on a binge and down the hole and I just continue doing that. They go to a place where they actually didn't retrain their brain before they did it. So, of course, they weren't able to do it. They're talking about a completely different scenario. They skip the part where I say, yes, you can retrain your brain. They, can't, they cannot receive that information because that does not mesh with their current belief. And therefore, they are stuck where they are. And sometimes they even go on and they tell me that I am wrong. And they tell me how I'm wrong. So they tell me that. So if that is working, the person that that works for probably wasn't ever an addict like me. And they probably naturally a moderator or anything else to justify their belief that an addict is always an addict and therefore they need to be abstinent for life. And it's fascinating to me how someone would rather defend this belief than finding true truth, true food freedom by unlearning the cravings. Why would you do that? It's because it's really uncomfortable to admit that you were wrong. It feels much better to do that. So as much as I wish that people would have an aha moment when I tell them this, a lot of the time that doesn't happen. Simply because they're not ready to, to take it in or believe it or opening up to this for this to be the truth, because that means that they've been wrong all this time. And that could change a lot about their worldview. And often they need to hear the message several times and have enough time to process it to even start believing that it's possible. So if you want to become better at getting rid of old, unhelpful beliefs, you need to open up yourself to being wrong about what you currently believe. And that's not an easy thing to do for yourself. I might be biased, but there is a reason that I became a coach and it's because I know how powerful coaching can be. I'm by no means done growing. I still have a whole bunch of unhelpful beliefs around certain things in my life, but I'm constantly moving forward because I get this outside perspective from my coaches, from someone who isn't emotionally involved in my beliefs, someone who can just see my beliefs for what they are without the emotional attachment. It's super hard to see your own bullshit beliefs when they are unconscious. But it's really easy for a coach or someone who's listening to your story to catch it and point it out to you so that you can do your work on changing that. And I will be happy to help you on Sunday to do that if you come on live. Once you get this like uncovered, when you see what beliefs you have that are stopping you, you can start working on it. But since these beliefs have been there for a very long time, it's not as simple as deciding to change them to something different. It takes a little bit of work. We're going to start doing some of that work in the masterclass on Sunday, but it's something that you need to do ongoing. You need to commit to doing it and keep looking out for it and see what it's doing in your life. When you want to uncover those beliefs, what you can do until you get to a point where you can start changing them is that you just try to find them. You start uncovering them for yourself and have a look at what impact those beliefs have on your life and observe what is happening. If I believe this, I, or what has happened as a result of me believing this? When you're looking at the possibilities for your future and what you are capable of, at some point you're going to come up against one of these beliefs that will stop you from achieving it. So the easiest way to recognize 
these beliefs for what they are is that you will use that belief as a reason for why you haven't done what you said that you wanted to do. And it would seem very valid, but it's just another belief that you're up against. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask yourself what it is that you really want and what is your current explanation as to why you have not achieved it yet. Whatever that reason is, you will probably think it's legit. And I will be willing to bet money on that it's just a belief. So what you can do right now is just ask yourself that question. Then you take that answer and you explore it in detail as much as you can. How is it true and how is it not true? You explore both sides. You don't leave one or the other out. You want to see the whole full truth of it. And then I want you to spend the next few days to see how this belief is impacting your life. And then you bring whatever you discover to the masterclass and we can talk about it. And I can help you with that. If this concept feels like intriguing to you and it feels like, oh my God, I really want to do that. And you feel like it is keeping you stuck in an eating pattern that doesn't serve you. And you're not quite sure if you can get hold of your own help, unhelpful beliefs. I do want to recommend that you join Radical Food Freedom, which is starting on February 4th, which is a group. We're going for six months. We're going to work, do a lot of work on beliefs in there because it's the biggest factor when it comes to my clients wanting to go back to old habits. And it doesn't have to be that way. They always learn what to do. They're doing really well. And then the beliefs are kicking in and then that becomes a problem. If joining the group isn't an option for you, we will be doing some work on this in the masterclass on Sunday. We have 90 minutes. That's how much time we have. So all you have to do for that is you sign up and then you show up on Zoom on Sunday. If you can't make it live, I will send you the replay, but only if you have signed up. So the replay of the masterclass will not be available on YouTube or in the Facebook group. So the only way that you will get, get access to it is if you sign up. And it's completely free to attend. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Just 90 minutes of your time. Come prepared and do some work and get your brain working to start changing those beliefs. Just want to give you a little bit more information about the masterclass. So what I'll do is I'm going to cover everything that I have covered in these three classes that we've done this week. I'm going to explain how to go about creating a plan with your dream outcome in mind so that it's effective and so that you are able to implement it into your life, whatever that looks like. I will also spend a little bit of time on the bigger reason behind why you want to do this. So if you haven't done it yet, go and search for the seven levels deep exercise on YouTube or in any of my previous challenges. It's there as well. Or if you're a client of mine, you will find a video on this exercise down at the bottom of the course page that is called um, Six Weeks to Quit. You just scroll down to the bottom, you will find a bonus video called Seven Levels Deep. This will help you to be really clear on why it is that you're doing it so that you can better absorb the information that we're going to, everything that we do on the masterclasses and so that you can start moving forward with that deeper reason in mind when we do that. And I think I've covered the price that you have to pay for your dream outcome pretty well in the last training, but I won't leave that out completely because most people want to forget about it. And you really do need to remember that. There's a price to pay for all success that you're going to have in your life. The biggest thing that we will do will be on your beliefs because that's super important when it's a good idea to start changing them because it might not be appropriate to try and do so while you're still believing them to be true. First, you need to start poking holes in them so that you can see that they're not true because if you start changing them when you already believe them to be true, that usually leaves, leads to sort of an avoidance behavior. Like you stop thinking about it completely. Your brain goes blank. It can't see anything. So if that happens, you know that you started tried to start changing that belief too early. And as I said, we have a lot more work to do, and we're going to do that on Sunday. So now I'm going to take some questions. 